Firstly, apologies on the delay on dropping the segments this week. I was taking my time a little bit too much with doing the studying for UFC 290 to ensure that I'm giving you guys as best of predictions that I possibly can because let's be honest, the last couple of weeks have been a little bit of a doozy. So I wanted to ensure that I was more than comfortable, fully locked in in terms of getting these predictions out for you guys. And it pushed the podcast back, obviously, to dropping on Wednesday. And now I'm going to be dropping these segments Thursday, Friday, and on fight day as well. The one thing that you guys will also notice is that there will no longer be the main event mayhem segment dropping for you guys because I noticed that that's doing the least amount of traction in terms of views and interactions and it makes sense. You know what I mean? I'm pretty much saying the exact same thing that you guys hear in the full podcast when I break down the main event. So... Starting next week, I'll be dropping and replacing that segment by speaking about my top three dog of the night predictions. And I think that's something that's something you you guys would be down with. Uh, you know, I have my lock, top three lock of the night candidates. I'll have my top three dog of the night candidates. And then obviously my locky two step, which is still in a bit of a slump. We'll talk about that on that segment. And then the three best prop bets as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those four segment ideas, but let's get right into the top three lock of the night candidates for this week. Quick recap though of last week, we went 0-3. It was horrible. Even my actual lock of the night prediction, Melissa Gatto, ended up shit in the bed there. I did not give enough credit to Ariane Lipsky's takedown defense improvements as she was able to keep that fight upright and do good enough work and allow uh, you know her striking to flow as good as it did. And I was kind of surprised in terms of how gun shy uh, Melissa Gatto was that night. But even Ishmael Bonfim shit in the bed, and uh, I can't recall the last one off the top of my head. But everybody pretty much shit the bet in terms of who I was confident in last week it was not a good week for pretty much anything so we're gonna get try to get back on the horse here so we'll give you my top three uh lock of the night predictions again this could be a uh money line this could be a total this could be a fight doesn't go to decision fight goes to decision prop um but the first one we're gonna go with is a, a total and it'll be for one of the first couple fights of the night in Cameron Simon and Ter- Terrence Mitchell to go under one and a half, which currently sits at minus 175. Terrence Mitchell is an Alaska FC product who got onto the Ultimate Fighter back in 2016 and was promptly knocked out by Kai Car France within 30 seconds or so of that match starting. Terrence Mitchell has been going out there and just absolutely beating up on some of those low-level Alaska FC guys. And the fact that 16 out of his 17 opponents have less than 7 professional fights lets you know all you need to know about the level of competition he's been going up against. And then when he faced somebody of solid value, like Kai Car France, he ended up getting knocked out pretty quickly. I expect the same thing to happen this weekend with Cameron Simon going out there, putting his speed, agility, and power to use, and finishing Terrence Mitchell pretty easily. On the flip side, Mitchell might be able to take advantage of the takedown defense flaws in Cameron Simon's game and might be able to snatch up a sub of some sort, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to try for something like that, get it reversed, and then get pounded on by the much younger and much brighter prospect in Cameron Simon. So first lock of the night candidate is going to be the under one and a half in that fight. Second lock of the night candidate is going to be a money line spot on Vitor Petrino, who currently sits at minus 225. I feel like he's probably one of the best money line spots on the card, considering how much chalk there is on this card. We have a lot of minus 500s, minus 1000s, but you know, somewhere in that minus 200 range, I think Petrino is one of the better spots. We know Pracnia has a decent karate style and he was able to chip away at William Knight in his last fight, but he's going to have a bulldozer ahead of him this weekend and Petrino who's going to be closing the distance, crashing the pocket with big shots, and I think he'll eventually be able to find the chin of Pracnia. The flaw in Petrino's game, at least in my opinion, was his defensive grappling, but he showed off some great things against a solid grappler in Anton to call you last time around and i'd be surprised if marching prak now is going to be the one to uh, exploit those shortcomings in petrino's game but i fully expect petrino to be pushing the gas from the minute uh the this fight starts and then eventually find the chin of prak and put him out clean at minus 225 i don't mind him as a potential lock of the night prediction and then the third and final candidate for the lock of the night prediction is going to be the robert whitaker and drickis duplessis fight to not go to a decision which currently sits at minus 190 
out of all the fights that Drikas Duplessis has had in his career, I believe only one of them has hit the scorecards, and that was the uh, Brad Tavares fight he had a couple fights back. That was a fight where he put major power on Tavares, and even though he didn't record a knockdown in that matchup, he wobbled him visibly many times, and he was close to finishing him throughout that matchup. If Robert Whitaker has any durability issues still, I'm sure Drikas Duplessis will be the one to take over that and showcase his knockout power once again. But what I really think is going to happen is that Whitaker survives that initial storm, maybe puts some wrestling on Duplessis, slows him down, and eventually finishes him in the second or third uh uh, round of this fight I fully expect Whitaker who is normally fine with going to a, a decision to go out there and try to make a statement against Duplessis especially considering that the winner of this fight will likely get a title shot against Israel Adesanya and we already know Whitaker's his history with the current champion so putting a stamp on an, uh, you know, a number one contender fight by getting a knockout like that will likely serve him very well in terms of getting the respect of the population and you know earning him that title shot that a lot of people believes he he deserves so uh, whether it's Duplessis getting an early knockout or Robert Whitaker finding that rear head kick knockout that he likes to aim for I think this fight does not go to a decision at minus 190 I think it's a damn good spot as well and there you guys go the three best lock of the night con contenders at least in my opinion let me know what you guys are thinking for your lock of the night prediction nothing too crazy you know I don't mind dropping a minus 400 if it comes down to that if you feel that good about it but these are the three best considering the odds, in my opinion, for UFC 290. Let me know what you think. Link, uh, drop a comment below and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Lucky Two-Step.